College of William and Mary, it's great to be home. Chancellor Gates, President Reveille, Rector Todd Stoudemire, I, um, I have to tell you that this is unexpected. And I, um, I would further say that it is unwarranted when I look at the greatness of this university, formed 16 score and four years ago, I think of a, a man who traveled his nation, pleading, as the chancellor so eloquently laid out, to form an institution that could create legacy. And I, while I'm proud to be a part of that legacy, am not worthy of the platform on which I stand. But I would like to salute someone who is worthy, my sister on the platform today. Would you give a round of applause one more time for Millie West? <laughs> I must say, if there is someone who is worthy of this on my behalf, it would actually be my mom. Yeah, she's, uh, she was the one who was a single parent who understood that excuses were just like belly buttons. Everyone's got one and none were any good. <laughs> she was the one who demanded that education was first. I couldn't play sports if I got a C, which I tell my kids uh, is not this thing you call a C today. A C was a 75 to an 84. And so all your marks had to be 85 or, or above, and 85 really wasn't making it. That was skating, right? And uh, so my mom's diligence is, um, is really the reason I am here. So if, if you would like to give a round of applause to anyone on my behalf, it would be my mom. I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, well, uh, just building a little bit of momentum, uh, expediting, if you will, the energy in the room. I'm going to ask, when I say clap, can I get everybody to clap, but just one time together? So I say clap, everybody claps, but just once together. Here we go. Ready? Clap. 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 When I say go, you say try. Go. Clap. Now this time, if you, if, if you didn't feel it in your stomach, you didn't do it right. One more time. I say go, you say try, go! I've been asked to address three things. One, why William and Mary? Ready, clap! Two, what impact has football played in my life? Ready, clap! Three, diversity. I'll start with why William and Mary. Why William & Mary is actually a pretty easy one. I came to William & Mary because it was the best, well, the most comprehensive academic and athletic opportunity that I had. And um, I had some other choices for school. They included uh, Harvard and Columbia, but William & Mary was the most comprehensive choice that combined academia, and athletics. And I have to tell you that um, I haven't regretted one moment of that. This venerable institution very quickly informed me that um, I had made the right choice. I went home the first year after the first year in the summer and um, 
I got a job right away working at a company called Honeywell. And the reason I got the job was just because I went to William & Mary. Yeah, they knew that I could run already because I was in high school there. But, but when they found out I went to William & Mary, they didn't even ask a question. They said, yes, of course, you can enter our leadership program. Three things I want us to understand here today. This university endows us something. 324 years, there's a level of respect that is virtually unparalleled. So with that, we have to understand that we are heirs to access. In other words, we have some things that are privileged to us that others don't have just because of our membership. I'm going to ask you to be a good steward, a sensible steward as an heir to access. I also wanna let you know that as a member of this institution, you are a courier of freedom. What do I mean by that? A courier of freedom. You see, attending this institution, you, uh, you're part of a tradition that goes back 324 years, and, and we started so long ago. The effort there 324 years ago was similar to what it was today, and it suggested that the more educated we became, the better community, the better state, the better country we would be. We are couriers of freedom. Why? Because true freedom is intellectual emancipation. It is the freedom of the mind that is true freedom. I, uh, I want to challenge you today to protect that to be lifelong learners. Never stop learning, never stop growing. As well, I, uh, I want to remind you that, um, how are you, coach? <laughs> uh, being a part of this university, you are a steward. And I want to suggest, Coach, I've learned so much from you. Something you told us all the time before we went off to break, right? When we went before break, you would always say, when in doubt, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, To a team of football players, that wasn't just clever, that was needed, right? Uh, I, uh, I'll ask you if you wouldn't mind just clapping one more time. Here we go, ready? Clap, 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 clap. I had a one more thing to say, but I need to move on because of time. I'm going to run out of time here. So, so, so why William and Mary? It was obvious, and it's the obvious solution. If William and Mary, you, well, membership has its privileges. I want to move on to what football has done in my life. And as a kid, it, um, it gave me confidence. Growing up to a single parent in government housing, football was something that came easy to me. I could always run. I was always a coward. I could get away, right? <laughs> And um, it gave me confidence. As I went to high school, it went from being confident to being transcendent in my life. What, what do I mean by that? It, it actually it was able to take me out of a situation. And I, I, uh, I do want to say that we didn't stay in government housing. My mom was a hard worker. And we did get out of government housing, but we were, we were in um, a challenging neighborhood. And... Um, I went from a challenging neighborhood to one of the best academic institutions in the country. 
that, um, that was transcendent. When I arrived here, football became my identity. Being from a small town, Dunedin, Florida, I wasn't really sure that I fit. I didn't know everything. And um, it gave me an identity. That identity then gave me more confidence in every other thing that happened on the campus. It gave me more confidence as a student. It gave me more confidence as a member of the greater academic community. Then as I moved on and got a chance from this institution to play one year in the NFL and 12 years in Canada, it gave me ambition. Ultimately, it gave me authority. It gave me authority over the ability to take care of my family. Now, I don't want to suggest at all that football did all of this. And um, there is not an academic or spiritual relationship here. But football and sport in general has been tremendous in my life. But the greatest thing sport has given me, the greatest thing that football has given me is the, well, it's increased my capacity to give. We have a foundation that works in our local community and has also expanded out. It's called the Pinball Clemens Foundation. And, and we have built now over 200 schools in developing countries, including Kenya and Haiti uh, and uh, we've also built in Nicaragua and Ecuador, rural China, India. Uh, this game, more than anything else, is giving me the capacity to give. I'm going to ask you just a, a, a simple request in life. Give more than you take. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Clap! 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 Finally, I uh, want to tell you a little story about a drifter. Are we out of time? We, we okay? Okay. I, I want to tell you about a drifter. This, this happened several decades ago, right? Um, several decades ago in the western part of this great state, right? It was a rural area, and a drifter came through the community, and he stopped at a farm, and, and he told the farmer, he says, listen, I've got, um, I've got nothing. I've got no money. I've got no food. He says, but I am a great worker. He says, do you have anything that I can take part in, anything I can do? I can, can I work so that I can have a place to stay? And he, and he says, absolutely. He says, as a matter of fact, your, your, your timing is perfect. He says, you see that property over there, the property on the other side of the, of the stream? He says, yes, I do. He says, that's my brother's property. He says, do you know that we built this whole thing for our families together? But one day we had an argument. And he had the audacity to take the same tractor that we built our whole lives with. And he went down and he drudged that stream to separate our properties. He says, what I'm going to ask you to do is this. He says, I'm going to ask you to go and build a fence so I'll never have to see his place or his face ever again. The gentleman agreed. And he said, um, do you have some tools, some things to work with? He says, yes, I'll show you the wood pile in the morning, and I have all the tools you'll need. He got up that morning, and the gentleman showed him the wood pile and the tools, and, and uh, he went off into the city. He said, I'll be back at the end of the day. When the gentleman returned, he still heard knocking in the back, so he said, I guess he must not be finished yet. And, and uh, uh, he went on in the house, and, and pretty soon he, uh, he heard the knocking stop. And it was getting to be around dusk, and it was a day where, where well, some fog had fallen in. And, and as, as he went out, right, he, um, he, uh, he saw a familiar gate. As he was walking, he saw the shadow coming towards him. And as he began to see it, he said he looked like a familiar walk. The walk then turned into a run, and this guy ran, and he wrapped his arms around. He says, my brother, my brother, my brother. He says, I can't believe this. He says, I had the audacity to take the same tractor that we built our whole lives with, 
and I drudged the stream to separate our properties, but you had the love in your heart to build a bridge between our two properties so that we could have a relationship again. Embarrassed, he hugged, and all of a sudden, the differences seemed so trivial. He went to find the guy, the gentleman, the drifter. And he, when he found him, he said, sir, sir, thank you so much. Thank you so much. He says, you're welcome, right? He says, listen, you can stay, in, in, you, you can, you can stay at my property as long as you want, right? So you, you just name. I, he says, I got plenty. And the guy says, no, I'm sorry, I have to go. He says, no, 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 no. He says, well, you can stay as long as you You always have a job. He says, no, 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 I'm sorry, I have to go. He says, what do you mean? He's feeling guilty. He says, no, no, sir, sir I'm, I'm sorry, I have to go. You see, I have other bridges to build. As it relates to diversity, it's too big a topic for us to handle in the next couple of minutes. So I'm just going to ask you very simply to allow it to start with you. Ask yourself, am I the fence or the bridge? As I close, I am going to, um, well, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind, if you would, uh, well, when I say clap this time, I'd like you to stand to your feet and continue to clap. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is not a corny way of getting a standing ovation, no. Our last, um, our last objective here is, um, just to celebrate each other, just to cheer for people. When you learn to cheer for people in life, your own crowd noise will consistently exceed your expectation. So as we, um, as we finish here, I'm just going to ask you to clap and, and continue to clap. And, and, and don't look at me. Look around at other people so that they know you're clapping for them. This is the other thing is don't be the first one to stop clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be first. Why? Everybody's not going to be easy to cheer for. But if we're going to get it right, we're going to keep, we got to keep cheering anyway. This is, um, this is actually when I wish I could beckon the, the dynamic delivery of our very own Coach Mike Tomlin. I want to share this quote before we do our last clap. It's one of my favorites, written by Teddy Roosevelt. It says, it's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled or how the doer of deeds could have done them better. The man who counts is the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs and comes short again and again because there is no effort without error. Don't be afraid to fail. But it's the man who actually does the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasm, who knows the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows the triumph of high achievement, but who at worst, if he fails, fails while daring greatly so that his soul shall never rest with those cold and timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. Live to beat. Give it your all. I love this quote. I had to make sure I wasn't using it out of context, though, because, you know, sometimes you see something, it's like, hey, and it's out of context. I went back and I saw it's part of a larger speech in Paris, and in this particular speech, right, there's another little thing that we're going to summon us for our last activity that we're already prepared for. It says this, it says, 
In that speech, it says, the stream can only rise as high as its main source. Let me say that again. The stream can only rise as high as its main source. It's wonderful, and I'm grateful for this honor today. But it truly is our collective greatness that makes us special. It's what we all add. It's not just Coach Laycock. It's not just Millie West. It is not just our eloquent and savvy chancellor. It is all of us. If the stream can only rise as high as the main source, what you need to understand is that you, we, are the main source. So when you rise, we rise. That's why we're going to rise together here at the end. I say clap, you clap. You don't stop until I open my hands, OK? We good with that? Thank you so much. Here we go. Ready? Clap. Thank <laughs> you.